Look, it's another one of those blue packages coming from Europe. This one from Ireland, and so I know immediately it's part of Cubicle 7's pre-order delivery for the Warhammer Fantasy 4th Edition Collector's Edition. All right, so remember, safety first. As you can see from the blue package, there has been a variety of challenges presented to this package. It has been retaped. You can see along the side that it has been holed. <laughs> and fortunately, there does appear to be your friend and mine bubble wrap inside. So let's take the plastic off. Pretend that this giant fragile sticker meant something to somebody. <laughs> Apparently nobody in the delivery service. And see what things look like. Okay. Despite the big rip in the side and the general look of abuse <laughs> that the outer plastic has taken, the plastic itself is fairly tough. And while... Working from that big hole, I'm able just to rip the end off. I don't actually need this stupid little jackknife. Um, just for a moment, look at the amount of bubble wrap. <laughs> so uh, all my concern uh, has evaporated. <laughs> this, this is a lot, a lot of bubble wrap. And inside, you can't see it yet, but I can feel it with my fingers. Inside, there is a cardboard box. <laughs> so, you know, if something is going to be wrapped in bubble wrap, you definitely want it to be wrapped this way, especially if it's something like, you know, a, a leather-bound uh, collector's version. <laughs> so, let's take a look at the cardboard box. I'm looking for some kind of uh, seam here where this, was, where this was taped, but, uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, <laughs> there is just... Well, I think I can just pull it off. Okay. Maybe not. Maybe I should have stuck with a knife. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this is... I mean, no joke. This is a lot. This is layer after layer after layer. They're going in different directions. <laughs> We've got a lot of bubble wrap. I'm... Uh, this is... This is like the highlight of, of my week. <laughs> okay. So you can see that... Not only is it a heavy cardboard box, it's a heavy cardboard box that has extensions on the end to protect the corners of the product. Fantastic. Now, because I know those of you who also live far, far away from wherever it is these, these packages come from, care. Because I know you care, like me. Let's take a look at this box. So if you're thinking about ordering uh, this product from Cubicle 7... I think you can rest assured that it's going to come in the condition <laughs> that it that it was packed in. Uh, you can see that these corners did their job. They've been roughed up. They've been hit numerous times. So here's the package without bubble wrap. It has one of those convenient pull tabs, so it comes right off. No wrestling with you know with the heavy glue, and it even has instructions. Open here. Of course, actually opening here is way over there, but that's neither here nor there. So, one last demonstration of this noble box. I feel a lot of, I feel a lot of camaraderie <laughs> with this box, actually. It has uh, done me well. And you see that impact point there. That's, that's very curious. And look at this one. Like, what happened there? It almost looks like somebody stabbed it. So, let's get the box off. Over the years of doing these unboxings, it's slightly less than a 50-50 success rate with getting <laughs> getting these things completely open. But it looks like this is going to be one of the successes. It's going to come all the way off, all in one piece, and the box will actually be open as a result of that effort. Look at that. All right. Now, in case it hasn't been clear, this is a Warhammer Fantasy product, the new edition from Cubicle 7, the fourth edition. And what I have more bubble wrap. What I've ordered is the collector's edition. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one being that I'd simply prefer plain covers on books. Uh, there's there's really no other reason that it was worth it to me. And I I like leather-bound books. 
and the improved binding was the, the final selling point. Now, you're saying, well, if you're talking about a plain cover, I can clearly see the Warhammer logo in there. It doesn't look very plain. Well, as we get through, if we can ever get through, if we can ever find the opening in this bubble wrap, <laughs> uh, the book itself comes in a protective case, a magnetically sealed box for your book. And uh, that was, you know, another attractive element. Okay. Lots and lots and lots of bubble wrap. So, I feel like somebody at Cubicle 7 likes books as much as I do. Okay, here we are, finally, after all this time, at the so-called good part that some people seem to enjoy more than the actual unboxing part. So, this is the box. And... Yes, that glint you're seeing, that is shrink wrap. So we've got 800 layers of bubble wrap, a thick cardboard box, more bubble wrap, and shrink wrap. So, count me satisfied. This is a very understated and effective design for the cover. Uh, art affects people in different ways, and one of the things about Warhammer that isn't of a primary concern to me is the art of of the characters the and the people this is something that i prefer to have reside in my own imagination but this this background of our fantasy european setting this emphasis on the on the magic and the iconography this is something that appeals to me much more so let's just take a look around the box so pretty good size. I was worried it would be very large, but this doesn't seem to be much larger than I'm imagining the book to be. We got the PDF uh, quite a few months ago, so I have a sense of, you know, its size and its appearance, but this box has been what I've been waiting to see. There's a, a hint, a spoiler about what the book looks like inside. All right. And don't forget your friendly warning about who's allowed to use boxes. Oh, it's playing time. How about that? Not bad. All right. This is one of this is like a uh, a nesting doll unboxing. We've got the bag, the bubble wrap, the box, more bubble wrap this box and its shrink wrap and then finally we'll get to the book psych i bet you thought i was gonna slowly peel off the shrink wrap well no this is inside the box so i have kind of done a little switch on you not looking at the book just yet but inside the box there's this ribbon to help you lift it free and underneath that more bubble wrap i mean this amount of bubble wrap was the bubble wrap that made my day. I thought my day had been made before, but I was wrong. This is better. So all aspects of the box, as you can see, have been very nicely conceived and put together. Here's the back of the book. <laughs> Just endless surprises today. So it's a very nice calfskin feel. I'm going to try and get no shadow and focus at the same time so that you can see the texture. It's very, very smooth. There we go. And it's, you know, it's soft and supple. It feels like, gasp, a leather book. And of course, the smell, the smell is wonderful. So here we have two ribbons and we have Smith binding. The gold gilt page edges these are not something that i'm this is never something i'm looking for this is just asking for it to come off it does have an effect it does it does add to the you know the glamorous appeal of a thing but it's details like this that i prefer when i'm handling the book i will have to worry about this this golden applique on the page edges. I don't really want to read the book with gloves on. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. It appeals to some, 
Uh, I'm not the market for that. Now, let's finally, finally, finally show you the spine of the book rather than looking inside. And look, there's nothing on it. This must have been the result of a lot of conversation, I imagine, like, do we leave it alone or, you know, do we brand it? And uh, I'm quite happy with what they went with, sort of a, a grimoire look, personally made from some slobbering but uh, well-educated in, in publishing, chaos-tainted agent. <laughs> so inside, we have text. Very legible text. Watermarks are kept out in most cases from behind the text, which is nice. The color choice of the page is nice. We can see the construction of the book is very solid, a little noisy. Uh, that's more the leather uh, and the, the cardboard inside the spine than anything else. And the art is not overwhelming. You know, there's a lot of material to pack into one volume to have a fully playable game of this type in this page count. So I'm glad that there aren't, you know, section after section filled with, you know, full page art. All right. The book lies flat and we can, when in focus, see everything that we need to see. There are a lot of charts, well organized, large, not shrunk down to save space. So overall, the the first impression that the book makes and the PDF is very, very strong. This was a book that a lot of thought went into. Now, that is not to say that it is not without flaw. There are saddening uh, typographical errors. There are weak spots in the editing. And it's not always clear what it's talking about. Things that a professional editing staff could catch. And I find myself saying this more and more often of late. I'm, I'm someone who adds a lot of games to their library and keeps the games that they have added over the years. So when I look back at older games, I see that the, the art of layout and design has certainly evolved over the years, but the quality of the text that goes in has declined over that same period. And it's frustrating and sad. And I find with Modifius, I'm finding sadly with my beloved Cubicle 7, and I'm finding with the recent Vampire, and of course I'm finding with all of Chaosium's modern stuff, that there is a, a, a tremendous shortcoming in the amount of effort paid in those areas. And if we're going to have editions like this, they demand better and we as their purchasers deserve better. So it's really something that needs to change and needs to change now. Now, of all the special editions I've added to my library over the last two years, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition by Cubicle 7 is the least troubling, likely because of the very nature and talent found at Cubicle 7. If people pick this up, if this is their first Warhammer game, or if this is one of many editions of Warhammer that they own, I'm fairly confident that they will be satisfied. Those who prefer the older editions of the game are going to find a lot of things that are familiar and fun, and people that are completely new to it are likewise going to find something that is very easy to grasp and fun to play. So I think that Warhammer 4th Edition will have a good and healthy career ahead of it with good stewards at Cubicle 7.